Thanks for joining us. I'm Dave Brown here at ringside, ready to go with another day of USWA Championship Wrestling. What a day we got today. Dirty White Boy and Doug Gilbert will be in here. I'm interested to see Doug Gilbert after the goings-on of recent days. Also, Cowabunga will be in here going against Eddie Gilbert. That should be a fine single match we got for you a little bit later on. Brian Lee and Don Harris will be here teamed up, of course. And we've got a six-man tag team match on one side of that ring. Jeff Gaylord, Joey Maggs, and Rex King. All of that coming up today. You stay with us. We'll be back with Dirty White Boy and Doug Gilbert coming out here in just a moment. Stuff, Eddie Gilbert. Thank you, Tony. This is for the hot stuff right here. Uh, chopped to the throat, I noticed. You, did you say anything, Rayford? No, I didn't. You didn't? How's that mask feel? If Lawler threw the fire, would you feel it? No, no. I didn't. Fireproof mask. That's yeah, it. right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't, I'm not buying that at all. I, I think you're just out here. I think Doug is ashamed to be out here and show the people that he's, he's bald. He doesn't have any hair. His first official appearance in the match. Famous for getting his rear end kicked. He's going to get a kick now because my brother in the ring. <laughs> Doug Gilbert in. Boot to the midsection. Top of the boot. That was all right. That was legal. <laughs> Doug Gilbert right. under a mask. Watch this. Watch this right here. This is their patent move. This is going to be all she wrote. Oh. Goodness. He didn't uh, get up from that. Uh, I think you're right about that. I gotta agree with that. Count of two, three. No, he's not gonna get up from that. Go ahead, say who won the match. The three count, the match won by the dirty white boy, Tony Anthony, and under the mask. Under a flame resistant mask. Flame resistant yes. mask. Doug Gilbert. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, here you are. Yes. Come on over Dave here. Dave keeps thinking, Dave keeps thinking that the reason why you're wearing the mask is because you haven't got any hair. Yeah, I no hair under there. I I that, I mean that's it. Match occurred. Well, I tell you what, I tell you what, I think I've got a videotape right here. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I do have a videotape we can stand it by. We don't have to talk about it. Take a look at why he's wearing this mask. Sam Lowe running around outside the cage has Lawler and Dundee in Idol's attention. That's hot stuff, Eddie Gilbert and Dougie, along with the dirty white boy in there with powder. Attack. The team from behind. Idol with a right. Staggers the white boy. Follows up with a foot to the midsection. And a big right. Pitch the white boy off of his feet. And the tag on the king. And Lauder comes in with the fist going. He's going for a pile driver on the white boy. Hands him up. Connects it. Jams his head into the mat. Here comes Doug Gilbert. And Lawler takes care of him. Nails white boy again. Down for the cover. But Dougie is there to break it out. The King off the ropes. Catches Tony Anthony. Eddie Gilbert. And Doug Gilbert go down to the canvas. Lawler coming back. The resiliency and staying power. Incredible on the King. Well... I think he should have gone for the tag at that point. Dougie picks him up to his feet. Gonna set him up for the pile driver. Sets him up and just drives that head right down into the canvas. Point Lawler's out of it. He is at their mercy. White boy fires him into the ropes. A high backdrop. King is down and possibly out. Austin Idol. Grabs the tide, pulls White Boy out. White Boy fires away. Dundee trying to stop him, and White Boy firing away on both of them. What a fierce competition tonight. They've got him up for a stuff pile driver. Calhoun's down. As all the men are in the ring now, going after each other. Tony Anthony picking Lawler up. Jabs him with a right, but Lawler with a small package on Tony Anthony. Dougie Gilbert in from behind with an elbow to the back of the head. Idle working Gilbert. 
Crawford over in the corner. But Lawler holding the white boy up again, and Idol for the second time levels Lawler. As the dirty white boy has Lawler pinned, Calhoun rolling over. This could be it. A count of one, a count of two, a count of four and a half. Lawler barely makes it out. And he does make it up, and everybody is on their feet here tonight. Everybody's hair was at stake. Lawler, Idol, Dundee, all of you guys. Everyone just saw what happened, and just days ago, the head was shaved, and now he's out here under a mask. Well, that's right. I told you, a flame-resistant mask. That's the reason why he's out here. Now, I could come out here, Dave. I could say, well, they brought powder into the ring. They pulled Tony Anthony's boot off, hit Doug. That's the only way they won the match. You know, I could come out here and cry over spilt milk. But I'm not going to do that, and I'll tell you just exactly why. Because, see, Dave, we're the Gilberts. See, we're not like all the rest of these ordinary people around here. Yes, we grew up in Lexington, Tennessee, but we're a pretty special family. See, about 100 years ago, my famous great Granny Gilbert left me and Doug something, because she knows sooner or later down the line some of the Gilberts would need it. And it's a famous potion, a famous potion called Granny Gilbert's Hair Elixir. And what I did after that match, see, I didn't mind, and neither did Doug. If we lost the match, we knew all we had to do was rub a little bit on our scalp. Let me see it. Right here, and all we did, and for all you unbelievers, right here it is. You need a little bit? No. And I want to go ahead and show everybody out here that my brother has hair. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. All we did, we poured a little bit on there rubbed it in, and about an hour later, it grew all back. It's even kind of better than his hair before, isn't it? It's great, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know, it we don't care. Put us in any hair, mate. We'll come out okay. I don't care. I got Granny Gilbert's hair. Leaves. Granny Gilbert, yeah. Hey, Dave Brown, wh 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 where's Tessa? That's what I want to know. Don't you have a piece of film where we can show Tessa? Not huh? right now, where's we don't. Tessa? Not right now, we don't. No, 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 no. No, I'm, I'm going to take a couple of minutes to recover. I don't know where she's at. We'll talk that? about that later, I'm right? I'm going to take a couple of minutes to recover from Granny no, no, Gilbert's talk about this. magic elixir. Uh, we'll amazing, talk. We're not going to talk about amazing. that. It is, it's more than amazing. But let's talk about it's the not, white girl. Not right now. We'll take a break. No, we'll be back in just a minute. Right It's USWA Championship Wrestling Wednesday night at the Evansville Coliseum. Six sensational matches on the card. In Evansville Wednesday night, you'll see Hotshot Joey Mag battle the Galaxian. Brickhouse Brown takes on Southern Rocker Rex King. Evo Baxton takes on Doug Gilbert. The USWA Tag Team Championship will be on the line Wednesday night at Evansville as Brian Lee and Don Harris with downtown Bruno, their manager, defend the belt against Jeff Jarrett and the Missouri Tigers' Jeff Gaylord. 
the Dirty White Girl takes on Vicious Vicky. And the main event, the $5,000 held up after last week's match for this Wednesday night's return drug battle, Kawabunga and Superstar Bill Dundee take on the Dirty White Boy and Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. Six sensational matches, a great card of action, super U.S. WA stars, all Wednesday night at the Evansville Coliseum. Don't miss a minute of it. Eddie Gilbert, a dirty white boy, I don't care what you say, what is right and what is wrong is wrong, and you know exactly what you did last week. My friend Kyle Bunga beat you in that battle royal to the next. All I did was went down to get justice done, and the next thing I know, the lights went at you, whacking me from behind, busting my head open, and running off for Kyle Bunga's money. Well, this week it ain't gonna be no dough, no, I wish I could say it on television. You got the turtle mad, and you got me mad, and when you get this man mad, I'm telling you, brother, I've never seen a mad turtle, but he's taking that on you. That's right, man. He got me mad. He stole five thousand dollars from me. Got to buy a lot of Domino's pizza, my friend. I'm a hungry turtle. I gotta eat too. And you took my money. Not only that, you hurt the superstar. My best friend in wrestling. He took me under his wing and he showed me wrestling. I know karate do, but this is wrestling. And he showed me the way. He showed me the ropes. And we're coming to you, my friend. But we're not taking any prisoners. We're gonna kick. $5,000 worth out of your shell, my friend. We're going to beat the shell out of you, and you're going to be shell-shocked. You can count on it for me and the sewer, sir. Granny, show the tape, show the tape. Yeah. Come on, show the tape. Right, Dave, well, I want to see the tape, buddy. Right, well, you got the tape. Well, show the tape. I want to see the tape. With Tessa. The Battle of the Valets, Tessa against Dirty White Girl. The loser can't be a valet anymore. Here's my what happened. Friend Dave. Scratching, biting, hair pulling, it's all going on. As the white girl takes Tessa down to the canvas, going for a paint cover, attempting to now. Tessa, up on top. Oh, the white girl has her draped over that rope. I think she's choking her. Dirty white girl has some powder. She just threw powder in Tessa's face. Scoops her up by the leg, rolls her up. Oh, no, here comes Frey Morrell with the count. Frey, that is it. I don't believe it. Dirty White Girl has won this match, and Tessa is history. Well, looks like there was plenty of powder what flying in there, there, but... Uh, that was great. Yeah, well, girls are known for putting on makeup. That's what it was there anyway. But there's nothing more to say, Dave Brown. There's nothing more to say, people. Our dirty white girl and our special little family has proven without a shadow of a doubt she has retired Tessa Ray. And Tessa Ray is no longer around. Poor Bill. Poor Bill. <laughs> Poor little old Bill. And right now, I'd like to give you the pleasure and all these many, many fans of the dirty white girl bring the queen of Lady Ballets out. Please. Right now. Right now. I don't hear a lot of applause at all. Oh, there she is. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't she beautiful? Oh, yeah, see, beautiful. she has a couple of ballets, it looks like. Sam Lowe and uh, Doug Gilbert. Queen of ballets. Queen of ballets. Pretty white girl. Dave, hey, look at her. He's absolutely gorgeous. Easy, boys. Careful. Easy. Let her down. Easy, that's the boys. There she is, in the uh, outfit of the victor, I suppose, huh? Boy, did I prove who was tough around here, or did I prove who was tough? We all know that that cheap little floozy that they got off a street corner somewhere could not handle the white girl. Well, we all know who the real lady is around here, so um, just look. Look at uh, what's happening around here. Not only is it the dirty white boy and hot stuff, but it's myself. So, uh, Lawler, you can, uh, you know, if you have another little floozy or something, you just bring her on because the white girl took care of one and she can take care of two. You're looking at the toughest walking around. It don't matter if they five, six, seven or not, it don't matter. Look, uh, look over this way and you will see the king and the superstar. And I notice a lot of folks are moving across the way over what there. What you find is she's proving she's the smartest, the most beautiful, and also the toughest girl. And can throw the best powder there if you watch the videotape. That, that mic is live. Yeah, Jerry Lawler, Bill Dundee. Well, 
you know, I'm sure that uh, you're pretty proud of yourself. She did win the match. She uh, made Tessa Ray no longer to be able to be our valet. And uh, oh, that's, that's real funny. That's huh? real funny, brother. You're real happy about that. Real funny. Where's your valet, Billy? Where's well, let us just tell you something, brother. As an old saying, who laughs, laughs, laughs longest, right? And that's exactly what we're going to We're going to laugh. Oh, you did fine. You cheated. You threw the powder. And you taught this little hussy real nice. But, but mouth, we got a new valet. We had to go out. Woo. We had to go out and get ourselves a new valet now. We had, I guess she got her out of a bar somewhere downtown or something, well, another street, street corner, corner <laughs> huh? Well, you know, you know, maybe, maybe she's right, Bill. Maybe yeah. Tessa was too much of a lady. Maybe <laughs> Tessa wasn't a lady. Yeah, maybe she wasn't as tough as she needed to be. So what we want to do right now is we want to we want to let you meet our new valet. We want to let you meet her right now before you meet her in the ring. Can you come on out here I right now? Bring that bimbo out here. We just call her Vicious Vicky. Come on over here, Vicky. Whoa. Come on over here and meet this young lady right here. Vicious Vicky, huh, has grabbed Dirty White Girl. And, uh, get out of the way of that chair that Lawler is keeping uh, Dirty White Boy and uh, Sam Lowe and Eddie Gilbert out of there with. Vicky working on Dirty White Girl up there in the ring. Got her dress ripped. Lawler and Dundee keeping... Uh, Tony Anthony, the dirty white boy, away from the action. Oh, my goodness. Vicky. Well, a little different result from the last time you guys out of LA. Whoa! As Kim and all the rest of them left here very, very quickly. Let me tell you something. Tim Hall and Keith Haynes to the ring. They're in the ring right now, waiting for their opponents and their opponents. A couple of rugged individuals being escorted by USWA ring girls themselves. Primetime Brian Lee and Don Harris, they hold the USWA World Tag Team titles. Those belts being placed right here on the desk. This is a non-title match. They jump in the ring, and that's the kind of champions they are. Jump their opponents even before the bell sounds, throwing Tim Hall out of the ring, throwing Keith Haynes out of the ring. A disgusting display from world champions, downtown Bruno. Well, it's real nice that everybody's going to beat me up. Well, brother, he's going to be crying them golden tears because he's going to look real nice in a... Like Mama says, brother, it be that way sometimes. This is the world tag team champion, the greatest tag team in the history of professional wrestling, the greatest tag team I've ever managed. And, brother, you got a big muscle head punk like Gaylord running around thinking he's going to do something to downtown Bruno. Thinking he's going to do something to the dream team, Brian Lee and Don the Stopper Harris. But brother, that's prime time we're talking about right there. And the Stopper and Big Jeff Gaylord, with all his muscles, all his power, all his glory, is no match for downtown Bruno. He's no match for the dream team. You walk around the streets, my brothers and sisters, my people, the street people. I don't care if it's at Pittsburgh on 4 Duquesne Boulevard. I don't care if it's in Louisville, Kentucky on Muhammad Ali Boulevard. I don't care if it's on Lower Broadway in Nashville. I don't care if it's over at McLemore's in Memphis, brother. People come up to downtown Bruno. They say, you're a punk. You're a weasel. But we got to give you credit because you're the greatest professional wrestling manager of all time. And Jeff Gaylord needs to know that because he could have a belt around his waist right now if he'd have listened to me. He could be a world champion right now if he would have followed my guiding light. But Dave, instead, he wanted to act like he knew everything. He wanted to act like he knew something. And he didn't know nothing. And now you can see where the belts are. They're right here in front of me on the desk. You're watching them. I'm watching them because they're mine, brother. They're my belts. 
belts. They're our belts. And Mr. Gaylord is never going to do nothing but maybe buy a picture of these belts. And that's what's going to happen to Jeff Gaylord right there. Because you don't turn your back on downtown Bruno or the Dream Team. And once again, baby, because it's like Mama says, brother, it bees that way sometimes. Try them golden tears, Gaylord. That's the closest you're going to get to them belts. Buying a picture of them or watching me on TV. Well, if you are through, we'll talk about the match here. This is a non-title match. The world champion, primetime Brian Lee, in there right now against Keith Haynes and his partner, Don Harris, in here today in a tag team match. Downtown Bruno ranting and raving about an upcoming match and which one of the opponents will be Jeff Gaylord. Now, Bruno was yelling and screaming that this is the finest tag team he's ever managed. He was saying the same thing about Gaylord and his partner about two or three weeks ago. But then Bruno cost Gaylord two or three matches. The losses were Bruno's fault. And all of a sudden, since they were in the L column, Bruno turns on uh, Gaylord. So he's no longer a part of downtown Bruno's stable. Oh boy, here they go. The match is over, but that's not enough. No, the world champions are not content just to win the match. They have to throw their opponents out of the ring over the top rope. And look out, Bruno over there, dropping down on Tim Hall. Boy, I tell you, what a group this is. Hey, put the chair down, pick up the belts, and let's uh, head on out of here, if you don't mind. John, oh, Bruno over here. Tim Hall's got a hold of him, so Brian Lee and boy. Lee and Harris throw him in the ring. Come on, let's take it out of here. You've got the match, you've got the belt. Let's go. Come on, Bruno. I tell you, after a guy's been thrown out of the ring a couple of times and then jumped up and down on, Bruno has to get in there and add insult to the injury. There they go, raising their own hands. They did get the win in the match. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> It's USWA Championship Wrestling, Wednesday night at the Evansville Coliseum. Six sensational matches on the card. In Evansville, Wednesday night, you'll see Hotshot Joey Mag battle the Galaxian. Brickhouse Brown takes on Southern Rocker Rex King. Evo Baxton takes on Doug Gilbert. The USWA Tag Team Championship will be on the line Wednesday night at Evansville as Brian Lee and Don Harris with downtown Bruno, their manager, defend the belt against Jeff Jarrett and the Missouri Tigers' Jeff Gaylord. The dirty white girl takes on Vicious Vicky. And the main event, the $5,000 held up after last week's match for this Wednesday night's return drug battle, Kawabunga and Superstar Bill Dundee take on the dirty white boy and hot stuff Eddie Gilbert. Six sensational matches, a great card of action, super USWA stars, all Wednesday night at the Evansville Coliseum. Don't miss a minute of it. You know, E.G., I don't understand. The wrestling promotion stopped payment on our check. We rightfully won that battle roll of $5,000. But no, the wrestling promotion, oh, oh, superstar, Bill Dundee, come crack. <laughs> and we didn't get our money. I'm not too pleased, but now <laughs> we've got Kawabunga and superstar Bill Dundee. They're going to put our money up on the line. Well, boys, you take a good look at these two men right here. That money belongs to us. <laughs> and we intend on taking it, don't you we? You know, Tony, it didn't surprise me too much and the promoters making us put the money up because I'm used to getting gypped and cheated by promoters, so it's right up their alley to do that to us. You want to put us in a match for $5,000 on the line? You want us to prove to you people that we were the real winners of it? We'll be glad to do it because okay. I love proving things. That's all I've done all my life. And Dundee, I'm going to get my hands on you, and we're going to make you a tall man this week. <laughs> in the Toro, we're going to speed you up a little bit. Oh, you tough. Missouri Tiger, Jeff Gaylord, is going to be participating in a match here in just a moment. We want to get him, uh, catch him on the way to the ring if we can and talk to him just for a couple of minutes about a match which is going to be coming up here, which he's going to be teamed with Jeff Jarrett. Here the music. There he is right there. Jeff Gaylord coming this way. The wild thing. Uh, formerly part of the downtown Bruno stable, but no more. Jeff Gaylord, you got Jeff Jarrett again. No count outs this time around. That's right. No count outs. 
I'll tell you what, I've never been more happier than in my wrestling life than I am right now down downtown Bruno. Everything seems to be going my way. I've got a new partner. I'm not losing. I'm making money. I'm getting paid on time. It's going great, and it's going to go even better this time, Bruno, because I've got you and those two idiots for no count out. And I'll be ready. You will be ready. Jeff Gaylord, the Missouri Tiger. His partner, as he heads to the ring, his partner is going to be Jeff Jarrett. Boy, Gaylord is team. Let's hear what Jeff Jarrett has to say about the match, too. Primetime Brian Lee and Don the Stomper Harris. Yeah, last week, myself and Jeff Gaylord, we proved to not only the people, but most importantly, we proved to you two guys that we could not only beat you in a fight, but we could take you right out of that Coliseum at any time. And I'll be the first to admit, those USWA tag titles were the last things on our mind last Monday. But this week, and this is gonna be a different story. Because myself and Jeff Gaylord, where we, yeah, we proved that we could hurt you in a fight. And now we're gonna prove you two conceited jerks. Yeah, that's right. You're a bunch of blowhards who run your mouth and talk about how great you are with those titles around your waist. And yeah, you do more harm to them titles than ever been done before. Well, this week, like I said, it's going to be a different story. Because we're not only going to hurt you and prove to you, and not only the people and everybody else, that we can beat you in a fight, but we're going to take those titles from you. And you're going to have to sit around every week, every Saturday morning, and watch us wear those USWA tag titles. So you guys better get ready, because Monday nights we're going to beat your stinking brains out and we're taking the titles. Jeff Jarrett's going to be teamed with Jeff Gaylord in that uh, match which is coming up for the USWA Tag Team titles. In the ring right now, we've got uh, Jeff Gaylord. We've got Rex King and Joey Maggs. Rex and Joey, former holders of the USWA World Tag Team Championship themselves. Six-man match coming up here. And going against them, the Twilight Zone, Quasar and Nebula, and the Shadow. All three of them wrestling under a match. Heading up for the ring area right now. And this match will be an expiration of time match. Maybe one fall, maybe three or four, as long as there's time remaining. We'll have some wrestling action for you. Ball number one, just about set to get underway. Jerry Calhoun says, let's do it. Here we go. Joey Mag starting for his team. And Quasar starting for the Twilight Zone. Quasar wanting a handshake. Joey Maggs. Okay, I'll shake hands with you. Aha! Quasar thought he had made a mistake. And he had Joey Maggs, but Maggs, uh-uh. He was ready for it. Boy, look at Maggs. Nice move. Joey Maggs. In control here. The Twilight Zone trying a couple of little devious tactics, but they're not working. Joey Mags with a reversal. Whoa! Twilight Zone ducks under the broad arm, round behind. Nice move. Puts Joey Mags shoulders on the mat. Count of one, two, only a two count. Got to give the Twilight Zone credit on that when Quasar put Joey Maggs down on the mat with uh, some misdirection. Nice move. Maggs fired into the rope. A drop kick by Quasar. Body slam now by the Twilight Zone. Drops down with the upper arm. Joey Maggs in some trouble here. Oh, Maggs. Up on his feet, and as Quasar was climbing a rope, Joey Mag helped him down from there. Threw him right in the middle of the ring. So the Twilight Zone makes a tag, and this would be Nebula coming in now. Tag made by Joey Mag. His regular tag team partner, Rex King, steps in there. They put a double twist on that arm. Double chop, and down to the mat goes the half of the Twilight Zone known as Nebula. With a twist on Rex King. Rex, nice kick as he kicked him back into the ropes. Come on, 
Rex pops him into the ropes. Twilight Zone able to catch himself there. Not this time, though. There's a cover by Rex King. Counts one at the two count. Twilight Zone able to get the shoulders up off the mat. We're two minutes, 45 seconds into the action here. Expiration of time match. Boy, there's been plenty of action so far here today. He joined us late. Doug Gilbert came out with a strange-looking toupee on. His brother Eddie claimed that it was hair that was grown almost instantly by just a little dab of Granny Gilbert's magic hair-growing elixir. Now Jerry Lawler showed what kind of elixir that turned out to be as he ripped it off later on. And it was revealed that Gilbert indeed still has no hair, result of a haircutting a few days ago. He lost in a six-man match. This six-man match continues. Joey Maggs back in there against the Shadow. The Shadow. And it looked like trying to go with a standing wrist lock, but it uh, didn't work out too well for him. Joey Maggs trying to take control again over to the corner, makes the tag, and here comes Jeff Gaylord, the Missouri Tiger, the big guy coming in there, former University of Missouri football player. This guy... Uh, traveled to his own drummer for a long, long time. He's tough. Look at that. Coming off the ropes. He smashes the shadow down to the mat. Count is at two. And this fall is over. Give Jeff Gaylord, Rex King, and Joey Maggs the victory in four minutes, one second. And Gaylord still stomping around the ring. I think he's still upset with Bruno. Well, he's not psycho, I think. I think he's just mighty upset. Well, they put it together with a victory here at the opening fall of this. We'll check the time and be back in just a moment. And all you wrestling fans all around the country and uh, talking about the universal heartthrob, Austin Idol. You've already seen him a little bit earlier today in a videotape in that uh, haircutting match with that ridiculous uh, wig that, <laughs> that Doug Gilbert came out here on. Supposed to have been Granny Gilbert's magic elixir for growing hair. And uh, Jerry Lawler uh, uh, made short work of that as he uh, r snatched it off here a little bit later on. Uh, but uh, anyway, the, uh, the uh, haircutting did involve the universal heartthrob who was a partner with uh, Jerry Lawler and the superstar Bill Dundee in that particular match. You are going to be seeing him around the USWA territory, so let's take a look right now at the universal heartthrob, Austin Idol. Anything that hasn't already been said about the universal heartthrob, Austin Idol. Uh, generally, he does his uh, talking, uh, well, he talks pretty good, too, but he does a lot of his talking in the ring where it counts. Austin Idol, be looking for him around the USWA in the coming weeks. 
Kind of reviewing the uh, situation uh, today here on uh, USWA Championship Wrestling, we got things started with Dirty White Boy and Doug Gilbert uh, coming out as a tag team against T.D. Steele and Ken Raper. Gilbert wearing that uh, fireproof mask. Eddie Gilbert, Hot Stuff, was saying he was out here testing it out for him, which we all knew what he was doing. He was trying to cover up uh, that haircut uh, that he'd gotten just a few days ago. Dirty White Boy and Doug Gilbert did, in fact, win the match. Uh, didn't get to describe too much of it for you because Eddie Gilbert was over here uh, and, and commentating and uh, not really talking so much about what was going on in the match and talking about that fireproof mask more than anything else. Then Cowabunga came in here to go against Eddie Gilbert, one against one. We had looked forward to that match, expected a good one, and we got a good one. Cowabunga had the upper hand early in the match. Eddie Gilbert came back and looked like he was pretty well taking control, and then all of a sudden Cowabunga was in control, and it looked like he maybe had a chance to get a pin on Eddie Gilbert. Well, at that point, I saw Eddie Gilbert say, Sam, come on in, help me out. Sam Lowe, seated at ringside over here, immediately jumped into the ring. That is a technical loss right there for interference, and that means that Cowabunga does, in fact, get the victory. Uh, he was later jumped as, uh, as uh, all of Gilbert's uh, buddies came running out here, and it was about four against one at one point as they were beating up on Cowabunga. But then the arrival of Jerry Lawler and Bill Dundee, and it's at that point that it was revealed that Doug Gilbert did, in fact, have very little hair left after that haircut because Lawler ripped that toupee off the top of his head. Brian Lee and Don Harris, they're the USWA World Tag Team Champions. They were out here today in a non-title match, but they pretty well showed why they are the holders of those world titles because they're willing to do just about anything to get a victory in a match, and they have downtown Bruno over in their corner. That's another one of those matches where I didn't get to tell you much about the match because Bruno was over here uh, yelling and screaming and ranting and raving about the dream team, the greatest team he's ever managed, They're the greatest team in the world. They're going to win everything. Well, they did win the match today that they were in, three minutes, five seconds. And then the six-man match, Jeff Gaylord, Joey Maggs, and Rex King getting the victory over the Twilight Zone and the Shadow. One fall, four minutes, one second was the time on that one. Speaking of time, we're out of it right now. We do hope you'll be joining us next week for more USWA Championship Wrestling. Until that time, I'm Dave Brown. So long, everybody. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of USWA Championship. Everybody, Dave Brown here at ringside. Got a great crowd ready to go today with USWA Championship Wrestling. Bundy the Gorilla is here. Bundy tells me he's got a uh, downtown Bruno doll. A downtown Bruno doll. Y'all want to see it, guys? Here it is right here. Right here. There it is. That's what he looks like. <laughs> well, yeah. you're pretty close. Bundy's going to be here with uh, some great uh, fun for uh, some of the folks here. And, of course, he's, uh, he's around the arena, too. So uh, be looking for Bundy as the day goes on with his downtown Bruno doll. Hey, coming up in the ring today, we got Brian Lee and Don Harris who will be in here a little bit later on. Rex King, Joey Maggs will be along later, as will Cowabunga. And we've got, well, of course, the Gilberts are going to be here today. Also, Jeff Gaylord teams today with a superstar, Bill Dundee. All of that coming up today on USWA Championship Wrestling. We'll be back with that and more in a moment. <laughs> Well,
Well, we've got action coming up here with Brian Lee and uh, Don Harris as they will be making their way to the ring. Here comes Eddie Marlin right here. Eddie, we've got, uh, Hi, Dave. got an interesting situation going on. I know you very, want to say a word about it. Very unusual, you know, situation. I don't know of any other time it's happened in the history. I've been in the wrestling business, you know, all my life. Or any other wrestling company. We have no champions. That's right, none at all. Yeah, you know, the USWA tag team belts were held up. And of course, uh, the situation I was talking about last week with Snowman Eddie Crawford, uh, he did not show up. This is his sixth time. And you know, the USWA rules, if you don't show up for a scheduled match, uh, the belt, you automatically forfeit the belt. And you know, we have an open contract on all of our wrestlers. So, you know, he was booked and he didn't show up. Uh, we've been over backwards. We had six times he didn't show up. Yeah, generally, if you don't show up one time, First the belt is, uh, is gone. First time. So what we're going to do is have a real big tournament for the USWA uh, belts. Uh, the unified belt? The unified belt, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Uh, we've had calls in from all over the country. I expect some of the top names in the wrestling profession today uh, to be in the tournament. But I just want to explain the situation, and that's where we're staying. Yeah, six no-shows. Obviously, you had no choice. The belt you know, vacated there. Dave, a few weeks, several weeks ago, we sat right here at this desk. And I told Snowman, no, you're going about it in the wrong way. We're not going to book the match. But Jerry Lawler, he insisted to have the match. I tried to explain to him what was down the road, so here's where we're at. No champions. Well, you're right. No champions at all, and uh, the tag team belts have been held up. The, uh, the unified belt has been vacated. So, looks like uh, tournament time, as uh, Eddie said, a big tournament coming up with some of the big names in wrestling here to try to get those belts. All right. Jerry Calhoun is headed for the ring right now. He'll be refereeing as uh, this team of uh, Brian Lee, primetime Brian Lee, and Don Harris will be coming in. They'll be going against Ken Raper and Freezer Thompson, who have just been escorted to the ring by the USWA ring girls. And there's Ken Raper in the blue tights, and the yellow over there is Freezer Thompson. Raper's out of Memphis, Tennessee. Freezer is out of Arkansas. And uh, across the way, also escorted by USWA ring girls, prime time Brian Lee and Don Harris. Dave, the reason and my boys are so fired up today is we're mad. Downtown Bruno, their manager over here. They, uh, come on, Bruno, stay out of it. They came in, didn't even wait for the bell to sound. They jumped their opponents and go to work for them. Bruno says they're upset. That gets me upset when I see them act like that. Well, not too, Dave. They took our belts away from us. I worked my whole life to have me some world tag team champions, and they took away my belt, my belt, my team's belt. Those belts belong to us, and because of some goofy, retarded, idiot goof like Frank Morrell, that took our referee to take our belts away from us, you understand me? Because there is not a team on God's green earth that can beat the dream team. There's not a team that can beat Brian Lee and Don Harris. There's no way, Dave Brown. So it took a referee for some reason, whether he likes Jeff Jarrett and Jeff Gaylord so well, or he hates downtown Bruno and the Dream Team so much, he wanted to make sure that he separated us from the Tag Team Championship of the world. He did it, but nobody's a champion now. Nobody holds the USWA World Tag Team Championship. But Dave, that's fixing the change, because downtown Bruno never makes a promise that he can't keep. Back in the 70s, they said that never, man would never be on the moon. But man was on the moon, he walked on the moon. Pretty soon they're gonna be on Mars. And they said downtown Bruno will never manage world tag team champions. But you're looking at the real champions right there in the ring right now, the dream team. And brother, believe you me, I don't lie. I said it, I mean it. Whenever I want something, I get it. Whether it be a female, whether it be some money, no matter what. 
And right now, the only thing I got on my mind is a World Tag Team Championship. And believe me, you just see it in the ring right there. The best tag team in professional wrestling today and the best manager in history. And believe me, we will have the Tag Team Championship of the whole wide world back again. Miz will go ahead and ring it now, Dave, because I don't believe that guy's ever going to get up again. Well, I'm glad he ring. finally took the opportunity to pin him instead of continuing to try to hurt him as he had broken the cover up at least three times earlier in the match. They throw Freezer Thompson over the top rope. Bruno, yeah, there's a real first-class manager for you, uh-huh. Over stomp stomping on Freezer Thompson after the match is over. Come on, you guys, get out of here. The match is over, you've won the match. You violated the rules again. I'll tell you exactly what about it. Well, I thought you'd had your say during the match. I'm never done talking, Dave Brown. Let me explain something to you. Talk to him, Kelsey. My cousin here is pretty upset. I'm pretty upset, Dave. It's like I was telling you, I'm going to tell all these people where they can look at my face. My whole entire life, all I ever dreamed about, all I ever wanted was one day to manage the tag team champions of the whole wide world. And they said, downtown Bruno, there's no chance, brother. You'll never be nothing. You'll never even be in the wrestling business. This is back in the 60s. They said nobody will even be on the moon. Well, man did go to the moon, brother. And downtown Bruno did get in the wrestling business. And downtown... The reason that that uh, count of three fell like there, the way it did. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That means we are the world tag team champions. No. Because I thought that a referee's decision was One, final. Two. Three. One, two, three. Now, if you can count that high, Dave, that means we won the pinfall. You know what a pinfall is, Dave? Can you say I know pinfall? what the pinfall is. Oh. And, yeah, you won it, but you were in the ring, and you were the reason for it, and they're walking around celebrating with the belts right now, but a change is about to occur. Yeah, because there's a retarded guy. He's a bald-headed geek named Frank Morrell that don't like us. Yeah, so, in right. other words... He wants to get over, have all the girls be his friend and everything. Everyone knows the only reason Frank's in wrestling is because of that little punk Jeff Jarrett. They ride up and down the road together, tell him, Harris. They ride up and down the road together, buddy, buddy, in and out of all the towns. The only reason he's still here is because of Jeff. And, and Harris, guess what? I think Jeff Jarrett's getting some signals on his butt. <laughs> You better get on out of here because here comes the Missouri Tiger, Jeff Gaylord, Jeff Jarrett's partner. And oh, baby, let me tell you, you two, Weasel, I just want to tell you right now, you guys are good at running your mouth as a matter of fact. I thought you learned how to fight at Kentucky Fried Chicken. You're not going to be able to run any longer because I have Jeff Jarrett in my corner and I got a weasel trap for you this week. Weasel, because you can run, and we'll be on your tails, and when we catch you, we will be the champions. You can count on it. So be there! Not only Jeff Gaylord, the Missouri Tiger, but also Jeff Jarrett and Frank Morrell had some words to say. Take a listen though, there, to them. Yeah. The guys get into this sport for a couple of reasons. And most of the time, they, the guys get in this sport to become, become a champion, become on top to hold either a singles title or a tag title. And now, downtown Bruno, you've got a team, and, and Brian Lee and Don Harris, and yeah, I've said it before, they could become a great team because they've got all the natural ability, all the talent in the world, but they throw that right out the window when they got you in their corner. And you know, I've got a partner in Jeff Gaylord, and yeah, we might not be the smoothest team, and have all the, all the double moves and all the double stuff like that. But I know one thing. I've had him a partner for two weeks, and I've faced him before, and I know how tough he is. It's, it's one thing that me and Jeff do, and we get the job done. Now, Bruno, I, I've heard all through my life about wrestling managers. I've seen them come, and I've seen them go, and I know one thing. They're no good. All they are is leeches. They want to leech on the guys with natural ability and talent who could get the job done if they were left alone. But no, they hire you. You con them and you talk them into sucking the money out of them. And then most importantly what you do is you get them into trouble. You get them into situations that they don't need to be in. Well, Bruno, 
All you are is a stinking gnat. And, and, you know, Bruno, I was raised on a farm, and I've been around a farm my entire life. And you know what we used to do to gnats? We used to either get a big fly swatter and swat them, or we used to get an exterminator come out and spray them and make sure that they're never around anymore. Well, this week, Bruno, the belts are held up. So when we go to the ring, it's going to be an even match. That's right. It's going to be two on two in the ring, and it's going to be one guy, yeah, Bruno, you're going to be in their corner. And in my corner, I've got a guy who I know I have no problem at all. Because Bruno, he's promised me, and Frank, come on in here. Because I know one thing, Frank Morell is going to take care of you, Bruno. And it's no secret me and Frank are friends. And he's usually a referee. But this week, he's going to be exterminator. And he's promising, Bruno, you ain't going to be no part of this match. Downtown Bruno, you're sticking your nose in everybody's business. Well, this week, I hope you do stick your nose yeah in Jeff's business, because my job, I promised Jeff Jarrett and Jeff Gaylord that I'd be in their corner just to watch you, and you is what I'm going to be watching. So I hope you do make a mistake <laughs> and forget about me being there and stick your nose in their business, because that gives me a reason to knock your lights out, because I hate you anyhow. That's exactly right, Bruno. I can't wait till match time, because Brian Lee and Don Harris, you've seen the belts for the last time. Self and Jeff Gaylord taking you guys out, and Frank is taking Bruno out. It's exciting. Championship wrestling from the USWA. Wednesday night, the Evansville Coliseum. Six outstanding matches. Opening up, Hot Shot, Joey Mag takes on Southern Rocker Rex King. You'll see Kawabunga, the Karate Turtle, take on Doug Gilbert. In a cowboy boot match in Evansville Wednesday night, Eddie Marlin versus Sam Lowe. A grudge $5,000 challenge match, Brickhouse Brown against Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. In Evansville Wednesday night, for the first time ever, tag team back alley street brawl. Both members of one team must be stripped to lose. Bill Superstar Dundee and Mrs. Vicky take on the Dirty White Boy and the Dirty White Girl. In the main event, USWA tag belts have been held up. Anything goes. Jeff Jarrett and Jeff Gaylord with Frank Morrell against Brian Lee and Don Harris with Downtown Bruno. And don't miss the action coming to Providence, Kentucky, Sunday, October 7th. More information next week on Championship Wrestling. And catch all the action this Wednesday night. Six great matches at the Evansville Coliseum. You know, a lot of things are happening right here, right now. People are getting run over, speed and getting run over. Doug, this week, you've got Cowabunga, and I want to see what a turtle looks like when you run over and you splatter him in the road. Sam Lowe, this is going to be your chance. Cowboy boot match, you come in the ring with a pair of cowboy boots on. So do you, Eddie Marlin. The one that gets them off, the other guy wins, and you can use them. And Brickhouse Brown, the people are about to see a history-making thing. They are about to see the name of Hot Stuff Eddie. Gilbert go down in history in the USWA because Jerry Lawler is fit to get a present for me right here on this program and brick up if you've got any guts at all show up because these are eyes of a crazy man I came back to be number one my brother's gonna be number one Sam Lowe's gonna beat Eddie Mullins head in and I am gonna reign the new king of the USWA and if anybody gets in my way I'm gonna run you over well, a few minutes ago, uh, when Bruno and uh, Lee and Harris were out here yelling and screaming, we were showing you part of a videotape of what happened when the belts were held up. Let's go back and take a look at the rest of what happened down there. The crowd behind Jared and Gaylord, 100%. Everyone's on their feet trying to explain to Frank Morrell what happened with the chain. the decision. Don Harris, Brian Lee, nail him right across the back of the head. Well, they looked like he was going to. I, he grabbed Jarrett's wrist, and about that time, he got waylaid. And all four men going at it. Jarrett firing away on Don Harris. Nails him hard. Gaylord is up on Brian Lee. And it looks like Frank Morrell is taking the belt. Situation. Nobody's going to get the belt. 
Well, and of course, that's exactly what happened. The, uh, the uh, decision was that uh, there had been outside interference by downtown Bruno, and therefore the belts would be held up. And uh, that was verified by the USWA committee, and uh, the belts have, in fact, been held up. There will be a rematch coming up between those teams, though, and we'll tell you more about that later on. Uh, another match which uh, occurred a few days ago was a 19-man battle royal. Now, in this one, uh, every man for himself in there, and we had wondered uh, how, how, you always wonder in a battle royal, how pairings may end up, uh, partners can end up uh, facing each other. And with $5,000 at stake, a lot of times you can have strange things happen. Well, we've got a bit of videotape of that battle royal, and let's take a look at what happened there. Brickhouse Brown. They no way is he going to go in there and split any money. He's coming after the $5,000. Both men fighting tooth and nail as Brickhouse sets the fifth. Brickhouse Brown with an atomic knee drop. Then touch to Betty Gilbert up and over the top rope and out of the battle royal. As Brickhouse Brown coming out victorious, winning $5,000. Uh, look out, Brick. Here comes Doug Gilbert, slam low back into the ring. Eddie Gilbert nails referee Jerry Calhoun, and now it's three on three. Oh, look out. Here comes a stuffed pile driver. Oh, man, they nailed Brickhouse hard. You know, for a minute, with the way Brickhouse has acted before in the past, I thought he'd split the money with Gilbert. But he said, no, I told you earlier tonight what kind of a man I am. I'm my own man. He said he's got a woman that takes a lot of money. He wanted a $5,000, and he won it, fair and square. Hey, yeah, leave Big House alone. Stop it. The match is over. It's all over. The match is over. The match is over. Eddie Gilbert has split the check. It is tight. After Doug Gilbert and Sam Lowe jumping brick house, Eddie just took the check, shoved it down his tight. Telling Eddie Gilbert that if he doesn't get on out of the ring off the brick house, he'll be fined. Eddie Marlin going up into the ring. Doug Gilbert and Sam Rowe jumping Eddie Marlin now. Eddie Gilbert just nails Eddie Marlin with that chair. Well, we need to get somebody in here to help them. Eddie Marlin at their mercy. I assume most of the wrestlers that are in this battle royal are back in the showers or on their way home after they've been eliminated. I don't know if they'd help Brickhouse, but I sure know somebody would help Eddie Marlin if anybody's back there in the dressing room. Eddie Marlin, a bloody mess, finally out of the ring. He's got on the mic. Eddie Marlin in there, calling for Jerry Law. As Sam Lowe and Doug Gilbert continue to pound on Eddie Marlin and Brickhouse Brown. Marlin in bad shape, bleeding now after being hit with that chair. Eddie Marlin needing help. Lower climbs up into the ring, pulls the strap down. The cleaning house. Collar's in there nailing them off. He's got both the Gilberts. Brickhouse back up to his feet. Brickhouse on Gilbert. Waller nails Sam Lowe. Waller and Brickhouse cleaning house after one of the sickest things I have ever seen in professional wrestling. One of the most disgusting and cowardly acts I have ever seen perpetrated by anybody. Thank goodness Lawler got there to help Brickhouse after an incredibly disgusting display. Oh, let's look up in the air. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's Super Lawler. Yeah, every time somebody down, whatever, stick his nose into my business. Well, I'm going to take your nose, buddy, and I'm going to cram it. Jerry Lawler, you want to say 
Chief Rickhouse Brown? Rickhouse Brown, the people didn't get to see what happened when I took the microphone. You were like a brother to me. I trusted you. I thought we would split the $5,000, and you turned on me in front of all those people. Now, I want to tell Mr. Old Man Eddie Marlin something. Stay out of my business. Stay out of my brother's business and stay out of Sam Rose. Because when you get on the microphone and tell me to quit, well, I'm going to do it just a little harder because I've always been a little rebellious. I didn't like people telling me what to do, Eddie Marlin. I don't like it. Eddie Marlin face to face right here. Listen, let me tell you something, Eddie Gibbert. First of all, I'm to talk to you, Sam Lowe. You shouldn't even be out here in front of the cameras. You should be running around the ring with your little camera. And I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm going to show you the color of your own blood because you're going to be in a ring with me and you're going to have on cowboy boots, and I am too. And I'm going to take your boots and bust that head. Now, let me tell you something, Eddie Gibbert and Doug Gibbert. I should have fired you last week, but I didn't. It's because Jerry Lawler... And Brickhouse Brown said, don't fire him. We can do more damage to him in the ring than you can by firing him. That's the only reason you are here today talking about the match. No, no, wait a minute. You know, I can stand a lot of things. I can stand people coming out and calling me this, that, and the other. But for you, the promoter, the man that represents the USWA, to come out here and tell me the reason why you didn't fire me is because Jerry Lawler and Brickhouse Brown said, oh, we'll kick their butts, Eddie Martin, let us have a match with them. The only reason why you didn't fire us, Eddie Marlin, is because we are the USWA now. I'm talking about the Gilbert. We are the Gilbert. You see, we represent the USWA. You wouldn't sell ticket one if it wasn't for me and my brother. You would not have anybody come to these matches if it wasn't for us. You would have an empty arena there because we are the hottest commodity in wrestling now. The people don't care anything about Jerry Lawler. The people don't care anything about Brickhouse Brown. They don't care about Bill Lundin. They don't care about Jeff Jarrett. They care about... Well, hit by the car. Eddie's checking him out there. Stay right here. Lawler. What? Eddie's calling for some help from... Uh, well, there's Jerry Calhoun and Bill Dundee helping out. Rex King out. Now Jerry looks like uh, looks like he's he's helping his own cause and getting up there. Well, boy, he's going to be mighty sore at the least. Let me tell you that. Eddie Gilbert went flying out of the parking lot there after being uh, after being fired by Eddie Marlin. Get Jerry back in the building here and make sure, get him checked out, make sure everything's all right. Well, well I tell you what, you deal with guys like the Gilberts, and, and I, I got to agree, Eddie should have fired him uh, last week after all of that happened, but uh, Jerry Lawler at Brickhouse Brown says, no, don't fire him, let us get him in the ring. Well, in hindsight, maybe it would have been better if, uh, if uh, he had just been fired before that. Well, I, I'd really like to uh, to get maybe get Eddie out here and uh, and and see if we can get the situation. But uh, I don't know. Maybe we uh, maybe we should take a break and check it out, and then we'll be back in just a moment. Stay with us. <laughs> It's exciting. Championship Wrestling from the USWA. Wednesday night, the Evansville Coliseum. Six outstanding matches. Opening up, Hot Shot, Joey Mag takes on Southern Rocker, Rex King. You'll see Kawabunga, the Karate Turtle, take on Doug Gilbert. In a cowboy boot match in Evansville Wednesday night, Eddie Marlin versus Sam Lowe. A grudge $5,000 challenge match, Brickhouse Brown against Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. In Evansville Wednesday night, for the first time ever, tag team back alley street brawl. Both members of one team must be stripped to lose. Bill Superstar Dundee and Mrs. Vicky take on the Dirty White Boy and the Dirty White Girl. 
in the main event. USWA tag belts have been held up. Anything goes. Jeff Jarrett and Jeff Gaylord with Frank Morrell against Brian Lee and Don Harris with Downtown Bruno. And don't miss the action coming to Providence, Kentucky, Sunday, October 7th. More information next week on Championship Wrestling. And catch all the action this Wednesday night. Six great matches at the Evansville Coliseum. Spent the best for a whole lot less at Oh, Anthony, the dirty wide boy. Just disgusting what happened in a match as Vicious Vicky was going against Dirty White Girl. Bro, this is a joke. I cannot actually believe somebody would enjoy looking at scum like that. That has got to be the grossest sight I have ever saw in my life. You know, White Boy, I just... I, I don't think she has a, has what it takes to be a lady. I think she's uh, lacking it up there. Oh, no. baby. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. You have nothing to be jealous about. Now, Superstar Bill Dundee, it's a back alley street ball mixed tag. And what that means is, big man, the only way you can win is when somebody gets undressed. Well, now, I don't think anybody wants to see Vicious Vicky undress myself <laughs> but dundee i'm going to show you exactly and everybody else exactly how we are <laughs> because you see let me tell you something vicious vicky butch whatever you want to call yourself you see it's one thing to put your hands on a dirty white girl but when you put your hands on me that's another story altogether now <laughs> if you want if you want to put yourself in a place of a man, well, then that leaves me no choice. I'll treat you like a man. And I guarantee you before this show is over with, I'm not going to wait till the arenas. I'm not going to catch you at the parking lot or at the grocery store. Before this show is over, I'm going to show you, vicious Vicky, exactly what I do to men that stick their nose in my business. I uh, it hasn't been that much pleasure. You've got a match right here, if you don't mind. I've got a match, that's right, but Eddie Marlin done went and fired my partner, and I don't like it, but the two jabronis that I'm going against, I really don't need a partner. <laughs> you understand what I mean? So I'll tell you what, if you'll just hang on, I'll go find myself a partner. All he has to do is stand in the corner. Well, okay. Tony Anthony, the dirty white boy, going to find a substitute partner. Doug Gilbert had been scheduled to be a partner with uh, with Dirty White Boy, but as he correctly stated, Eddie Marlin fired the Gilberts and sent them packing out of here. And uh, of course, the thing with it, Eddie jumped in the back. Right, Keith Eric is going to be your partner, all right? Keith Eric uh, is uh, going to be in the corner with Dirty White Boy. Keith is scheduled in uh, in another match later on, but uh, uh, Dirty White Boy says all you got to do is stand there and be my partner. So we'll see. Here comes Joey Maggs and Rex King as they step into the ring area right there. Referee Jerry Calhoun checking everything out, making sure we have one on a side, and we will be ready to go. It looks like Joey Maggs is going to be starting for his team, and Tony Anthony, the dirty white boy, will be starting for his. Dirty white girl back in the corner. Tony Anthony with uh, a word or two with her before he goes into battle against Joey Maggs. Mags and King, very, very good tag team. They came in here as a team, and uh, or that once they got together as a team in the USWA, it didn't take them long until they were USWA World Tag Team Champions. So they are the former USWA Tag Team Champions. In here against the very tough, dirty white boy, Rex King. They double up a little bit on him. They did double up a little bit. They doubled up on him. And Dirty White Boy finds himself slipping through the air down to the mat. Rex King says, get ready. Here comes a drop kick. There's a cover. One. Whoa. Only a count of one. Tough, tough to get a pin on this Dirty White Boy. He's big. He's strong. He's mean. Joey Maggs back in there. Some hair pulling looked to me like by Dirty White Boy. Joey Maggs. Steps over, and body slam. Tony Anthony once again. The Dirty White Boy finds himself on the mat. There was a cover, a count of about one and a half. The two count never hit the mat. Keith Eric started in uh, to help out, but uh, actually wasn't needed as Tony Anthony was able to get the shoulder up. Tony Anthony trying to break away. Joey Mag hanging on to him as Rex King springs off the ropes and landed on the left arm of Dirty White Boy. Dirty White Boy with the right fist doubled up. Referee was right there and immediately said, uh-uh, open that fist. 
Double twist on the arms. And by Rex King and Joey Maggs. And down to the mat again goes the dirty white boy. Dirty white boy sends Joey Maggs into the rope, picks him up, powers him down to the mat on his back, and Joey Maggs in some trouble here all of a sudden. Dirty white boy out of the corner. Oh, he springs. He was going to splash him, but Joey Maggs had moved out of the way. Joey's over near the corner. He needs to go ahead and get to the corner and get the tag on Rex King. He got the tag, and here comes Rex King against Keith Eric. Eric, not the official man in the ring. I don't believe, I don't think they ever made a tag. I think it's still Dirty White Boy officially in the ring. Rex King jabbed with that whip that Kim, uh, the uh, Dirty White Girl, carries around one, two, and three. Well, the Dirty White Girl handed uh, that whip into the ring to the Dirty White Boy, and Tony Anthony jabbed Rex King in the chest with it, right in the top of the rib cage. Oh, here comes Bill Dundee and pushes Vicky out. Dundee and Vicky out to uh, maybe, uh, I don't know what. Oh, they're explaining what happened. Yeah, they're explaining what happened. Referees reversing the decision after the explanation by Vicky and Bill Dundee. As to what happened, the referee reverses the decision, and Dirty White Boy, Tony Anthony, and Keith Eric go back to the dressing room as losers. Thanks for the explanation and getting uh, the result that should have been in that match. Right, there's two ways to skin a cat, and if you're going to fight fire, that's exactly what you need. So every time they're going to do something wrong, we come out. You can call it stooging out and you want. You're right, we go come out and tell on you folks, because if you win one thing, and I've told you a million times, you win matches, you lose matches. As long as it's done legal, one, two, three, I'll be the first one to pop up and say you're the better man. But you ain't the better man, Tony Anthony, and you ain't the better wom woman, whatever. What did she call herself? Dirty white dirty girl. Dirty white girl. Imagine waking up every morning, looking in the mirror and say, hey, I'm a little dirty white girl. Well, let me tell you something, lady. We're going to show We've already showed how much of a woman you are, and you ain't that much at all. Now, you want to see it well? The baddest woman in town is standing right here. And what are That's we going right. to do then? All I got to do is come out here and tell you. You know, I come out here, I showed the dirty white girl what I was going to do to her, and I did it. Oh, goodness. What was that? A bottle. Dirty white girl. Boy, I just broken. It looks like a bottle over the head of vicious Vicky. While Brian, Lee, and Don Harris are holding Bill Dundee down. Come on, leave her alone. Yeah. Tony Anthony, the dirty white boy out here, attacking Vicky. Bill and Vicky out here just with an interview. I didn't see them coming out and interfering in the, in the interview with dirty white girl and dirty white boy, but you know, that's the way they are. The dirty white boy comes roaring out here with it with a bottle and breaks it over the head of Vicky. Let me tell you something. I don't know what's going on around here. That stupid Gilbert's running all around with a car. That little slut comes out here and hits Vicky on the head with a bottle. But let me tell you something, boys and girls. If you want to fight, if you want more than wrestling, by God, you got it. And just like Laura said, you better watch your back going into the arena and coming out of it. Any more than I thought I like Vicky's going after him. Dundee is, uh, has got to, yeah, they need to get that head taken care of where they got it cut open where they smashed that bottle over her head. Get back, uh, Thanks, Eddie, for helping out. There they go back. Let's, let's break. We'll be back. <laughs> to wrestle in a single match. Uh, he was here a little bit earlier as a substitute partner for Dirty White Boy and ended up being uh, one half the losing team as the referee reversed the decision after an explanation was made 
that, uh, that the dirty white girl had to help interfere and pass the foreign object in to the dirty white boy. So he Derrick is back to try again, and uh, I don't know that I like his chances too much against this wrestler right here, Cowabunga, a fan favorite ever since he came into the USWA. <laughs> he <laughs> borrowed some, uh, some shades for uh, one of the fans right there. Coming this way, let's get a word or two from him as he heads to the ring. Sick, 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 dude. I have seen some major, major Barbasaurus dudes in the territory. Are you believing the Gilbert? The first family, they ran the king over in the parking lot with a car, dude. Totally bogus, totally. Major, pugus maximus. Well, I don't know about the Gilberts, but I know about Cowabunga, and I know the way I deal with things. I'm not going to sit back and watch it, my friend. The Gilberts, the first family, they're running around here acting like they own in the wrestling business, owning the USWA, running people over with cars. I hope Eddie Marlowe doesn't fire him, dude, because I want my shot at him. I want my shot. And major wiggage in the territory, dude. Doug Gilbert with a big wig on his head, dude. Major wiggage. Major wiggage. Cowabunga, that's uh, his opinion of the things that have gone on here today, and I must say I'm in total agreement with exactly what he's saying. He heads to the ring right now and steps in there against Keith Eric. Keith Eric, listen, this one's a rugged wrestler, let me tell you. Keith Eric is uh, a veteran, been around for quite some time. He's put on weight in recent months, and he is somebody to contend with when you step in there, but look at the moves that this Cowabunga has. He, uh, when he first came in here, I don't think I'll ever forget uh, Ken Wayne, uh, an interview in which Ken Wayne was basically laughing at Cowabunga and saying, uh, you know, I had no business in here, and this was for wrestling and uh, not for cartoon characters. Well, Cowabunga wasted no time in converting Ken Wayne, and they ended up being tag team partners. So. Cowabunga, look at that. Look at him go, and Keith Eric stumbles out of the corner, drops to the mat, counts one. Could it be over this soon? Yes, it is. Count of three, and Keith Eric, in a little bit less than a minute, about 50 seconds, goes down to defeat here at the hands of Cowabunga, who came out and he said in the interview before he went to the match that uh, the way he liked to handle things was in the ring, and that's exactly what he did. Keith Eric is there complaining, screaming about something, I'm not sure what, but he will uh, find little sympathy as Cowabunga heads out victorious. Back with more in a moment. It's exciting. Championship wrestling from the USWA. Wednesday night, the Evansville Coliseum. Six outstanding matches. Opening up, Hot Shot Joey Mag takes on Southern Rocker Rex King. You'll see Kawabunga, the Karate Turtle take on Doug Gilbert. In a cowboy boot match in Evansville Wednesday night, Eddie Marlin versus Sam Lowe. A grudge $5,000 challenge match, Brickhouse Brown against Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. In Evansville Wednesday night, for the first time ever, tag team back alley street brawl. Both members of one team must be stripped to lose. Bill Superstar Dundee and Vicious Vicky take on the Dirty White Boy and the Dirty White Girl. In the main event, USWA tag belts have been held up. Anything goes. Jeff Jarrett and Jeff Gaylord with Frank Morrell against Brian Lee and Don Harris with Downtown Bruno. And don't miss the action coming to Providence, Kentucky, Sunday, October 7th. More information next week on Championship Wrestling. And catch all the action this Wednesday night. Six great matches at the Evansville Coliseum. Wrestling fans, you've seen earlier in the program where the Gilberts was fired. Doug and Eddie was fired. Later on in the program, you've seen where Jerry the King Lawler was injured. I went to him to check on his condition, and he told me, he says, Eddie, if you fire him, I'm leaving the USWA. I'll follow them wherever they go. I'm unable to wrestle right now, but I'm not unable to drive, and they better watch their back anywhere they go. Now, this week, you've got Eddie Gilbert, Brick. I'm going to tell you something right now. I told you people for $5,000, I'll slap my mother upside her head. But you know what, Eddie Gilbert? I told the promoter, I'll do this for free because I want to thump, bump, and stump you upside your dapper head. And if you ever send your punk brother down to the ring just one time, I'm going to take him out too. Because where I come from, brother, you play the game right, and you do business right, and you don't try to take people out like you do. This is supposed to be a sport. And let me tell you something else, brother. If you want to play like that, come with it. 
Twilight Zone has just arrived on the scene, accompanied by USWA ring girls. They were over challenging the crowd, and uh, I tell you the truth, I think they might have better luck in the crowd than they will against their opponents, because also escorted by USWA ring girls, here comes superstar Bill Dundee and the Missouri Tiger Jeff Gaylord into the action right here. Expiration of time tag team match coming up. Might be one fall, might be three or four, depending on the time. We are underway with fall number one, and it's superstar Bill Dundee starting against Nebula of the of the uh, Twilight Zone. Nebula and Quasar, the uh, two members of the Twilight Zone team. Superstar Bill Dundee. He's not very tall, but he's big when it comes to wrestling, let me tell you. Never stepped into the ring an underdog, especially in his own mind. He makes the tag on the Missouri Tiger, Jeff Gaylord. This is a former player for the University of Missouri. Outstanding football player who uh, marches to his own drummer. Oh, he's steamed here today, too. He was upset earlier. He came out with a pipe in hand as he was upset with some of the goings on. Oh, look at this. Double team by the Twilight Zone. There's a tag, and here comes Bill Dundee back in. The Twilight Zone tried the double team, didn't get very far with it, actually. Dundee had him down for a count of one. Look out, he's after Bill Dundee's eyes. Twilight Zone, have him back in the corner. They make a quick tag. They're both in there. They double team Bill Dundee, fire him into the rope. Double drop kick coming off the ropes, and that was a pretty good-looking drop kick. Bill Dundee able to break the cover before the two-count falls. He's back across the ring. Highlight zone picks him up. Dundee smacks him. And Bill Dundee trying to take control once again. Look out, he's after the mask. Referee is there saying, uh-uh-uh-uh, leave the mask alone. No unmasking. Dundee, boy, you get him hot. He'll take that mask off and... May drag the ring out of here with him, too. Bill Dundee. The Twilight Zone. They've been around here for a number of weeks now. They do not have any uh, great one-loss record to show. But they have proven to be tough opponents. Their size is deceptive, very much like Bill Dundee. Dundee hangs onto the rope. Whoa, he turned around and popped him with the right fist. Had that fist doubled up. Bill Dundee takes him over to the corner, and once again, here comes the big guy, the Missouri Tiger, Jeff Gaylord. Gaylord with a hip toss. Puts the Twilight Zone on the mat, holds him down for a count of two. Twilight Zone into the rope. Whoa, just kind of bounced off of there. There's a count of one. Oops. Only a one count. Thought Gaylord might be able to hold him down for a count of three, but uh, this member of the Twilight Zone is the shorter of the two, but he's kind of slippery, hard to hold down. Here's the other one coming in right now. Here's Dundee after the tag. Oh, he's greeted by a right fist. Dundee, hip toss, put Twilight Zone down on the mat. There's a tag made. The Twilight Zone. And a tag made by Bill Dundee on Jeff Gaylord. to the slam has got one two and three that's it the three count and this one is over jeff gaylord goes wild once again after the victory he and bill dundee congratulating each other as they get the victory over the twilight zone boy look at this gaylord look out when he shows up at the arena my goodness and he'll be there too we'll take a break and we'll be back with more after we check the time
Owl Man in here. He has not been totally happy today about some goings on, and uh, I think he, uh, he showed it a little bit during that match as he and superstar Bill Dundee got the victory over the team of uh, the Twilight Zone, Nebula and Quasar. Earlier today, Brian Lee and Don Harris came in. Uh, they were going against Freezer Thompson and Ken Raper. Uh, Eddie Marlin made the announcement just before their match. There are no champions in the USWA. There's going to be a big super tournament you'll be hearing about uh, for the unified world title. But as far as the tag team belts are concerned, Brian Lee and uh, Don Harris said, don't worry, they won't be vacant long. We've got a match coming up, and we will again be USWA world tag team champions. Downtown Bruno in their corner. That remains to be seen, but they did, in fact, uh, get a victory here today. Rex King and Joey Maggs got a win over the team of Dirty White Boy and Keith Eric. Dirty White Boy got the, uh, got the pin, but a foreign object, uh, that whip had been passed into the ring by the Dirty White Girl, and uh, that was reported by Bill Dundee and Vicious Vicky, and their victory went to, it was reversed, and the victory went to King and Maggs. Cowabunga won his match. It was quite a day today. We'll have more next week. We hope you'll join us then. Until then, I'm Dave Brown. So long, everybody. The announcer is on.